All right, so the lesson's a lot of fun this week. It's a really great lesson for those of you that are working on your timing and trying to understand some different rhythms. So we're gonna talk through some rhythm ideas, playing on the offbeat and some of that kind of thing. Um, and uh, it's a very stripped down jam track. So it's a trio. So you got a, in the jam track, you've got just bass and drums. And so you have to fill in all the blank space as a guitar player. And it's just a lot of fun to do. And uh, it's great to kind of crank the amps up and get that kind of overdriven sound. So we're gonna break this lesson down over the course of two videos. In this video, I'm gonna explain the first half. We're gonna learn how to play that of what I played in the intro. If you'd like to learn the second half as well as download the tablature and get the MP3 jam tracks so that you can practice learning how to play all of this, you can get that by going to activemelody.com, go to the weekly lessons page, and do a search for EP447. So when I wrote the jam track for the lesson this week, I was thinking about George Thorogood. I was kind of going for that sound, something like something he would do. You know, he's always got like a real driving, overdriven sound with no reverb. It's just a real dry signal, and it's like, you know, a trio, and just a real rock kind of uh, blues thing. So that was the sound I was going for, but when I played the jam track for my wife, I said, hey, what do you think of this? She goes, oh, you're doing ZZ Top. And so I thought, oh, okay, that's cool. I mean, I didn't think about that, but I can see where ZZ Top's kind of in the same vein, also a trio. It's kind of got that sound like an earlier uh, ZZ Top album. And then there's this one little part, as I was breaking it down, it was driving me crazy. Uh, I'll talk through it as we get into it, but um, I was like, where have I heard that? And it's like a Billy Squire thing, which is really weird. Like, I'm not, you know, where, why that showed up in this, I don't know. But anyway, so this is kind of a hybrid of different styles, but you know this, the, the vibe, you know, that kind of that rock blues trio thing. So um, the first thing that I want to just talk about is tone. Uh, I'm using, um, this is uh, new to me, new uh, guitar that I've had for a few weeks now. It's a Danocaster. Uh, but I'm playing on the uh, the humbucker pickup, which is the bridge pickup, and I have the volume all the way up and the tone all the way up, and it's just got this really just nice breakup. Now the amp, I'm actually not playing through an amp. I'm using my Kemper Profiler, but there's no reverb on it. It's a and, and the profile I'm using is a Showman. It's a Fender Showman uh, with uh, I turned all the reverb off, and it's just I kind of crank the gain maybe halfway or something just to get that. Nice breakup, but man, it sounds great. Um, so you could get this sound with any amp or any pedal as long as you've got like some overdrive. Just turn your reverb off if you know some amps don't have it anyway. But um, make sure you got just a real dry, overdriven sound like that, and try and get you know dial it into something that sounds good. You don't want it to sound crunchy though. There's a sound; it's hard to describe, but there's to me there's like cool kind of overdriven breaking up sound of an amp, and then if you push it too far, it starts to sound like death metal, and it like gets into this kind of it doesn't sound very soulful anymore. And that's just a taste thing, but that's sort of how I hear it. It's less overdrive than you think, even though it sounds heavy. It's less than you think. Um, okay, so the jam track is very, very simple. It's stripped down. It's a bass going. Or is it going? I think that's how it's playing it. You know, it's just like one note, basically. And the whole thing is just E. There's really no other chords. It's just an E chord. Now, I do some fills and things with the bass, but it's really just hanging out on an E, e chord or an E note. And so because the bass is playing an E note, it isn't defined as being major or minor, and I kind of kept it that way. So I never really define it clearly as being a major key or a minor key, so it's really kind of power chordy. You know, and power chord is when you play like a, a chord, like an E chord, but you only play the root and the fifth. Uh, so it's like a five chord or the root and fifth. There's no third in there to define it as either or. Okay, so um, this is also a call and response. So the call that we're going to learn now, uh, and we play over and over again, sounds like this. And so, and then there's a response to that, which can be, or, or whatever. The response is different a little bit each time, but the call is always the same. So let's learn that call first. This is a great little uh, blues lick. So it starts with the open um, E string, the sixth string. And then I'm gonna slide with my ring finger to the fourth fret six string. And then I'm gonna bar really the first five strings on the second fret, but only play strings four and, uh, I'm sorry, five and four. And you can hear that, you can already hear that power chord sound, that E power chord. So that's the first thing we're gonna do. 
And those are all downstrokes so far with the right hand. And then we, so you hit that fourth string twice, and then watch this. So pinky comes up here to the fifth fret, fifth string, and then back to the second fret. And then we're gonna grab the third fret, sixth string with middle finger, the G note, pull it a little bit sharp, and then release it back to the E. So all together, and that's the call, all together it goes. All right, the thing is you wanna make sure not to just memorize these notes and apply them only to this song. And every time you pick up a lick or a new idea like this, like this little call, be it's kind of filing it away or trying to think about how you can use it in something else. I always like to do that. I think of, I've just learned a new word. Now, how would I use that new word? And obviously, since there's an open E string, it sort of limits it to the E key, the key of E. But if you're playing a blues in the key of E now, you've got, you've got things you can do with these. And so you can take these and break them apart and go, See, that's pretty cool right there. I mean, some of you walk away with this lesson with just that idea. It's a great little blues thing, and it's using that note. These notes are all just the E minor pentatonic scale. Actually, one correction, when I slide up to this note, that second note, um, that's actually not minor pentatonic scale. That would be major pentatonic scale. Uh, but the vibe of this, this lick is very minor pentatonic scale, very bluesy. Okay, so so far we have and then we have to add on this piece. And so that's just power chords, the E power chord. And so I'm keeping that bar there on the second fret, first five strings. We start with an upstroke, and we're playing strings four, five, and six. You can hear how heavy that sounds, just playing the bottom part of that E chord, or the bottom part of your E minor chord. So we do that, and then I can do down, up, but muted like this. And then another downstroke. So it's like this. So it's up, down, up, down. It's hard to do that actually slowly. That's kind of what it should sound like. So when you put it in context, it sounds like that. Okay, so that's the call. Now the first response after that goes like this. So let's learn that. So we're sliding into pattern two of the minor pentatonic scale for E. So that's this little area right here. So I slide into the fourth fret third string with my middle finger. Index finger goes down on the third fret second string. So it's a down stroke with the right hand and then an up stroke and then a series of up strokes like this. So that's the thing when you're playing on the offbeat like that, you're always doing I shouldn't say always, there's probably exceptions, but for the most part, I can't think of an example when you're not, you're always doing an upstroke. So you don't want to do that on a downstroke. You want to always keep your hand in the motion of the rhythm of the song, kind of like if you had a drumstick in your hand and you were beating along with the song, you'd be going one, two, three, four, one, two. Now notice every time I raise my hand, that's the off beat. So that's when I would do an upstroke. You can think of it that way. So it's like this. So the way we play that is, there's five of them. One, two, three, four, five. And actually it's a open strings one, or open strings two and three. And then we play second fret strings two and three. Open strings two and three again. And then we hammer on to the first fret third string. So it's like this. And then open strings one and two. And that's just your E chord, right? Top part of your E chord. So let me do that slowly. All right, so let's put them together now, the call and the response. All right, so after that, we go back, play the same call again, and then we come to the second response. The second response is pretty close to the first response. It goes like this. 
That's a Robert Johnson lick. That's what I was kind of hearing there. So the only difference is, and it's, instead of just playing strings two and three, we're also including that open one string, which is our E note. I slide that down one fret and then go back up. So. Now, you can hear there's some muting there, and that's a little more difficult when you've got the open one string. So I'm using uh, my hand, my right hand, to just kind of hit the, hit the strings here to mute them in between. So it's like this. Um, so anyway, there's different techniques. I'm also muting with the left hand a little bit. I'm raising the, the, my fingers off the fretboard. Now, this part isn't as necessary as the right hand. That's more of just a habit. Um, but I'm finding myself doing both. Okay, so that's the first two call and responses. Let's play it all together up to that point. Okay, so now we go back to the call. And then watch this, this is the next response. I love this. I'm not sure where I got this lick, but basically what I'm doing is I'm playing another power chord. <clears throat> so this is our E power chord down here. This is an E power chord played on strings four and three. And so I'm sliding up to the ninth fret, strings four and three, and then I slide down to the seventh fret. And I give it some vibrato there, just to give it some, I don't know, that's, that just, that's, I can hear that sound of hearing two strings with vibrato at once. It's just a real powerful sound. So we have, and then down to the fourth fret, third string, that's a note in our um, minor pentatonic scale for E. And then, we're gonna do a slide from the eighth fret to the seventh fret on the fourth string, and then we're gonna go, gonna go to the fifth fret, back to the seventh fret, back to the fifth fret. So, seventh fret, fifth string, and then the seventh fret, fourth string to conclude. And where we're at here is this little box that happens between the fifth fret and the seventh fret on the sixth string, fifth string, and fourth string. And I think of this as the bottom part of pattern four of the minor pentatonic. I mean, we've got different names. Sometimes people say, that's pattern two, or that's pattern. That's just how I learned it. So to me, that leads you up into this. And so the, I've always looked at this with this little bottom extension. I know that's kind of non-conventional. But anyway, just know if you're playing in the key of E, you've got the E minor pentatonic scale in a little box here between the fifth fret and the seventh fret. And you can connect it to your E chord there if you want, if that makes it easy, just to see, okay, where my index finger is, I got this little extension. However you can work that in in your mind to know where that's at. Um, so after the... After that, we go back into the call. And I play the same response again this time, but just changed the way that I was playing it, changed the rhythm. So this is, it's like a series of, it's not really triplets, I guess it's just eighth notes. So we're sliding from the second fret to the fourth fret on the third string, downstroke, and then we're gonna go up, down, up on the uh, third fret second string. So my index finger goes there. So it's, so it's one, two, three, four, and then we just repeat that. And then we go back down to the second fret, first fret, second fret, fourth string. And then there's a hammer on. Now I'm just thinking about my E chord here. Think of just playing an E chord, lifting your index finger, hammering it on, uh, first fret, third string, and then playing open second, open first. So it goes.
All right, so let's back it up to the beginning and play everything that we've learned so far, and then that will end this part one video. If you'd like to join us in part two, and also download the tablature and the MP3 jam track. You remember, you can get those things by going to activemelody.com, weekly lessons page, and do a search for EP447.